Hey, Larkin Rose here, and I wanted to do a short video about a strange thing that comes up now and then. Not very often, but it just came up again, where even a number of pro-freedom people who understand that government's illegitimate and no one has the right to rule and all that, still seem to have this residual fetish for the concept of law. And... I'm not even talking about the people who talk about natural law, sort of the way things should be in objective morality and, and stuff like that, because um, that's a different topic. I'm talking about people who they still think that in a stateless society, we're going to have something called law. And one guy in particular just kept posting a thing. Here's my great idea. And I just wouldn't entertain it because they kept pointing out that the premise doesn't make any sense. And the premise was basically, we need to enact the non-aggression principle and all these principles of, yeah, forces justified defensively, but not aggressively. We need to enact that as law. And I kept saying, what, what do you think that even means? Like if there's a group of people, 10 people, a hundred people standing around and we all go, yeah, we all understand it's not okay to attack each other. And I say, let's enact it as law. What the hell does that mean? It's a purely statist assumption. It's a statist premise that some decree is going to change something. A bunch of people recognizing that something is moral or immoral is fine and useful. And if everybody writes down that like, yeah, we're going to sign this thing that says we all acknowledge that this is how morality works and it's not okay to attack people. Okay, that's fine, but you wouldn't call that law. You'd call that writing something down. It's like if I wrote down two plus two equals four, I'm not gonna say, I just enacted into law the equation that two plus two equals four. No, I just, I wrote something down that was true. Likewise, in a free society, we may still have things that are basically statements or warnings or threats. For example, if there's some little town somewhere and the people think, you know, if we catch you drunk driving through our town recklessly, we're going to take your car keys or something. Not because we enacted the law and made this moral, but because we just think that's justified and we're just letting you know this is what's going to happen. It's sort of like the trespassers will be shot sign. The person isn't legislating something. He's not making it into law. He's just saying, just so you know, if you come on my property without my permission, bad things might happen to you. Now, whether or not you think that's justified and whether or not you agree with it, that's just him saying what he thinks and saying what he would do. It's just giving a warning but there's nothing law about that. And so it strikes me as really weird when I see pro-freedom people and people have like written big articles and have these master plans of here's how our legal system will work in a stateless society. There won't be one. There isn't such thing as legal in a stateless society. There's still moral. There's still a reason to think out rules and like, okay, if somebody's accused of a crime, like, well, what's the rational and moral way to approach this? Well, we want to make sure he's, like, actually guilty before we do anything about it. So I guess there's, you know, there's burden of proof. There's presumption of innocence. I've talked about these things before. There's things that rational, moral people should do. And it can be even useful to write down, like, here's the process we're going to go through. And we're going to think about it beforehand and plan it all out and have a procedure, but writing it down didn't make it legitimate. It didn't make it anything. It's like, well, I'm writing down the, the procedure for like how to change your oil in your car. <gasps> you made that be how you change the oil? No, it already was. I'm just writing it down to convey it to somebody else or to remind myself later. It didn't do anything to reality. But enacting a law and calling something law is obviously implying that you're going to make some external authority outside of people that people should feel beholden to. If I write down, don't commit aggression, Larkin's law number one, 
and I post it up, you are hereby notified that it is the law that you shall not commit aggression. Did that make it any worse or any better to commit aggression? No. Did it just describe what I think? Yeah. Is there any reason to call that law? No. Does anybody have any reason to view that as anything other than me writing down what I think? No, it's just me writing down what I think. They might agree with me. They might disagree with me. It doesn't stink and matter. To pretend that that's law is just ridiculous and it's just leftover status thinking. So while I totally understand and sympathize with the people who write out a bunch of things talking about, well, how would we like do our best to assure that justice happens in a free society? Okay, that's a good goal. And thinking about it and thinking of the best procedures to do and well, like what are the which evidence should we consider worthy and you know all the the intricacies you can get into when trying to determine the truth that's perfectly valid but the idea that writing something down and calling it law then makes it a thing other than just an expression of what somebody thought is insane and it's a hundred percent statist so no, and I know this is really hard for a lot of people to grasp, you know, most of the world that still believes in government, but I would expect most voluntarists to eventually get around to this. There should not be a law against murder. I'm going to say that again. Most people would hear that sentence and their brains would explode because they would assume that what I mean is people should be free to murder. It's not at all what I mean. There shouldn't be a law against murder because a law isn't anything. It's pretending that somebody's opinion or somebody's decree turns into some external thing that means something by it. So, well, the law says blah, blah. No, some guy said that. Now, if some guy said murder's bad and we'll try to stop you, I agree. And I would agree with him trying to stop it. But for him to call that law... What the hell does that even mean? That is falling back into the mindset of writing something down and then having that something have pretend authority as if it means something like two plus two equals four. There, I made two plus two equal four. Now this is a law. And people so much think in these terms. I mean, and I've, I've seen people complain about this, the, the concept of laws of physics, that we even look at those as laws and like you can't break the law of, you know, first law of thermodynamics or something as if they're commands from something and we will punish you if no, it's just a description of cause and effect and how stuff works. But people are so much in that mindset that they decide to call it laws, which is a little bit funny. But whenever people talk in terms like if they talk in terms of a justice system or how do we have protection or how do we figure out who's guilty or what to do about it or because there's moral useful um, reasons to to think about juries and the concept of burden of proof and even something that would look like a court but it's still just people you probably won't have some delusional doofus in a black dress with a wooden hammer because that's just weird cult crap pretending he isn't just a guy no, he's just a guy. But there can be a room full of people who are just guys, guys and gals, <laughs> not just males, who sit around going, that person was accused of something really bad. What are we going to do about it? Like, first, how do we figure out if it's true? And then what do we, as mere mortals who don't have any magic authority to defer to, what do we do about it? But the moment you say, well, I have a legal solution, you're falling into the mindset of statism. And for the people who say, well, here's how law would work in a stateless society, it won't. It won't exist. The entire concept of law is dictates from an authority as opposed to just people figuring out what they think is moral and letting other people know, if you do this, here's what we feel justified in doing to you. Not because we wrote it down, but just already ahead of time. We already think that that was bad and we have the right to do this to you, whatever it is. And you can agree with them or disagree with them, but to call that law is to give the words on paper weight of their own as if they're anything other than the expression of what somebody thinks. 
And so it's still frustrating and weird to see even some pro-freedom people fall into that pattern of thinking because they've been in it so long that it's uncomfortable for them to picture a world in which there are just people. There's nothing to defer to. There's no final decider. There's no ultimate authority to settle disputes. There's just people. And people have to figure out ways to settle disputes. Well, this is why we need some, like, people are going to cause trouble. So this is why we need a law. No, that's the delusional bullshit that imagines that law is something other than the opinion of people. And the entire concept of the rule of law, that, well, this isn't rule by mere mortals. There's this thing called law, and we are all beholden to it, and we bow to it. And we, at, Some people wrote that. Like, it's the most delusional religion there is. At least if you pretend like, oh, that volcano has a god in it or something or some other god or whatever, and you say, well, we bow to whatever we think our god said. Okay, that's one thing. But if you write something down and say, God said this, it's like, wait, I just saw you write it down and you didn't talk to God ahead of time. You just wrote that down. Well, okay, but it's the law. We went through the legislative process and enacted it as law. You just did some weird rituals and wrote down what you think. That doesn't make it deserve any more respect. It doesn't make it any more true. It doesn't make it any more valid. And it doesn't mean anybody has any obligation to give a crap what you said or to abide by it instead of abiding by their own conscience. And that's what people, even people new to voluntarism, seem to have trouble with is grasping the concept of a society in which each person ultimately has to rely on his own conscience and judgment. That's not a suggestion. That's a truism. That's all we have. It's a delusion to imagine that you can ever escape that responsibility. Well, I'm going to defer to the law or this God or some call. You're the one deciding what to believe and what to obey. It's still on you. So all these attempts to evade responsibility by trying to create something outside of yourself and then just mindlessly bowing to that and obeying that, it's all delusional. And to see some anarchist still doing it, well, we need a system of laws that are outside of me and that I'm, for some reason, going to defer to instead of using my own brain and my own conscience, my own judgment. It's weird and it's sad to watch, but it shows the depth of the indoctrination into statism that even when people can intellectually understand the illegitimacy of political power, so many people are still stuck in the template of, well, what will be done about? As if there's something or somebody who's going to decide that for everybody. You're going to decide what you're going to do, and I'm going to decide what I'm going to do. And for the most part, people are going to find ways to cooperate and organize and get along just fine. There will still be conflicts. When there is a conflict, there is no magic, all-knowing, all-righteous, external, non-human thing that's going to come save the day. There's just people. And calling something law is just an attempt to make something outside of people solve the problems of people. Only it's still coming from people. So you're just taking somebody's opinion and deifying it and saying it's law. No, it isn't. And just escaping that whole mindset is something that apparently a bunch of anarchists even still need to do. Because no, there wouldn't be anything resembling law. There would be warnings, there would be opinions, there would be people agreeing about stuff, there will be people giving warnings that if you do that, we feel justified in doing this. None of that is law. You have to get out of the mindset of, we need a written set of something that we defer to. Like in any other field of thought, people would recognize that as insane. Like in math, we write it down and then we defer to it. What if we find something that doesn't match? Well, the written down words that we wrote down before, we have to defer to them, even if they're provably wrong. No, we don't. That's insane. The whole point of writing it down was, here is what we think is true. Well, if tomorrow you go, oh, we were wrong about something, why the hell would you defer to the version of your opinion that you now know is wrong? And that's all that would ever happen 
if people fall for the notion of encoding anything into law and then deferring to that as if it carries any weight. So anyway, I guess I've ranted about that enough. But it's sad to watch people have that much difficulty escaping the old mindset and the old paradigm, even when they understand that government's bogus. We're going to have a non-government legal system of law. No, you're not. You're just going to have people doing people stuff. And the sooner you can grasp that concept, the sooner you can escape all the residual crap from statism that's still infecting your brain. Howdy guys, Amanda Rose here. And if you like the content you see from my husband, Larkin Rose, remember that he is not monetized on any of the platforms and everything he does, you get for free. So if you would like to support what we do here and help make it much easier for us to do it, check the description below for multiple ways to donate and every little bit helps. Have a nice day.